What you just made me do, look what you do. 913 is our time right now and the country is in the midst of a severe flu season and the Center for Disease Control's tracking data shows flu cases are still increasing across the country. To date, we have lost 30 children nationwide to flu-related deaths and adult flu cases are not reportable diseases in most states. But in just North Carolina alone, they've already had 42 deaths, many of them in people who were previously healthy. And that national trend applies right here at home, unfortunately. Virginia Hospital Center has already surpassed last year's peak numbers and seen many cases in its emergency room. So this morning, we are joined by a registered nurse and certified emergency nurse, Taryn Overman. Taryn is also the senior director in the emergency department at VHC. Thank you so much for joining us, Taryn. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you for having me, Holly. So how are things there? Can you kind of give us a status of the hospital? Sure, we are busy. We are seeing cases of flu in patients that think they may have the flu. We're definitely seeing an increase and we are in our peak at this time. Okay, so if you're at home and you're thinking you might have the flu, should you go to the emergency room or should you go to your primary care physician first? It's really important to see your primary care physician and get their advice. Go as soon as you start feeling symptomatic to your primary care doctor. The first 48 hours are key in receiving treatment. If you're experiencing severe symptoms, high fever that's not going down with antipyretics, or you're having shortness of breath or chest pain, that's when you want to go to the emergency department. So I think the, the, the scary part, though, is that we hear the story about the little girl in Mississippi who went, she got on Tamiflu, and then three days later she dies. It's really important that you follow the advice of your practitioner. If they're telling you to take in fluids, take in the fluids. You want to keep the fever down with the medication they prescribe and take the Tamiflu just as they prescribe. And again, follow your gut instinct. If your child doesn't look well, you're the expert in your child's care. Bring them back to the doctor immediately. And again, severe symptoms, bring them to the emergency department. What exactly is making this flu so deadly? I think the respiratory symptoms, that's what we're seeing, the shortness of breath. Um, and if you have any comorbidities, if you already have asthma, if you have um, COPD, something that, that weakens your immune system or your respiratory system already, it can be very hard on those individuals. So if someone in your family gets the flu, and, it's, and you know, they talk about that all you have to do is just breathe near someone that has it, you know, within six feet and you can get the flu, um, what's the best way to preserve yourself from getting it? Really important to get your flu shot. You can still get your flu shot. Call your primary care doctor or your local pharmacy and they'll refer you somewhere to get your flu shot. But really and truly hand washing. If someone around you is sick, make sure they're washing your hands, you're washing your hands. And if you are around children that are unable to get the vaccine, so under six months cannot get the vaccine, make sure you're really protecting those children. Keep them away from anyone who's sick. If you're sick, stay home. You know, the other thing that I think is scary, at least my husband currently has the flu, we're on day seven and he's still in bed, he's extremely lethargic, um, is how long he can be contagious. Ten days? That's what they told us. Yes, you can be contagious for quite some time, and that's why we recommend that you stay home until you're fever-free for at least 24 hours. And again, follow the advice of your primary care physician. The Tamiflu, if you take that, you're on that for about 10 days. So you want to run that course to make sure that you're not spreading the illness. Are there precautions that your hospital is taking for all the people that are coming in with the flu in regards to the staff that may be there or even other patients that are suffering from something else? So we take precautions that are recommended by the CDC on every patient. If you're coming in and you have influenza-like illness, we utilize masks and standard precautions on all of our patients. And if you look at our most vulnerable areas like our NICU, they have precautions in place year round to protect those babies. Lastly, before we go, Taryn, how long are we on this high alert status? It'll depend. Right now we're, we're peaking and we're seeing it widespread throughout the country. You can follow the uh, influenza-like illness statistics on the CDC's website, and that's what we follow and see how the other states are faring. But there's no real uh, end date for this. It just depends on when the flu season starts to resolve, and usually we see that around March. I actually am going to ask you one more question because you said it's not too late to get the flu shot. It's a hard sell, though, when all, all we constantly hear is it's not effective really this year. 
What's really important is that it is 30% effective is what they're saying. And if you get the flu, it's more likely if you've had the flu shot that you'll get a milder case of the flu. So it may not keep it away, but it can cause it to be a little more milder and you won't experience as severe of symptoms. All right, Taryn Overman, thank you so much. We sure appreciate your expertise and insight this morning. Thank you. And you know, it's just, I think, I can't remember the last time of flu season where it's been so high alert, you know, where they're like, look, you need to, right. you really need to be vigilant in your hand washing and, and all that you're doing and get the flu shot. You know, 30% is better than no percent. Right. And mm -hmm. so it's scary stuff though. But like I said, like that little girl in Mississippi, oh. I mean, you know, her mom did take her. Right. She was on Tamiflu right. and right. then, you know, it progressed and. So those kind of things are scary. And what but. also was troubling was, was when you mentioned that some people with no underlying immune mm -hmm. deficiency yeah. illnesses or what have you still um, succumb to the flu. So I don't know what you can do except wash your hands yeah. and yeah. Take right. stay home and try to, yeah. yeah. Of course. Okay. Thanks, all. It's 919 right now.